Hello. Um, having a great time here this morning or afternoon or whatever it is. I don't know. <laughs> With Luke 12, 13 through 21. Um, I'm going to read this um, to give you the context. It says, then someone called from the crowd, teacher, please tell my brother to divide our father's estate with me. Jesus replied, friend, who made me a judge over you to decide such things as that? Then he said, beware, guard against every kind of greed. <clears throat> Life is not measured by how much you own. Then he told them a story. A rich man had a fertile farm that produced fine crops. He said to himself, what should I do? I don't have enough room for all my crops. Then he said, I know, I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Then I'll have enough room to store all my wheat and other goods. And I'll sit back and say to myself, my friend, you have enough stored away for years to come. Now take it easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, you will die this very night. Then who will get everything you worked for? Yes, a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but not to have a rich relationship with God. This is so awesome. Um, so you guys, uh, look at this. It says, um, Jesus replied, friend, we're back on 14 now. Who has made me judge over you to decide such things as that? Okay, this is just brilliant. Jesus was so brilliant. Check out what he's doing here. Um, it sounds like he's saying, um, you know, to me, if I were to say that or someone I knew were to say that, the implication would be, um, I'm not the judge over such things. But if you take his question literally, literally, who made me the judge over you to decide such things as that? The answer is no one. Because he's been that judge since the beginning of time, since before the beginning of time. He's basically establishing his eternal authority over all. Establishing that he has credibility, what he's about to say, the next statement he's about to make, which is about the core of all of our labor, our desires, our aspirations, our significance. It is the question of, how is life measured? And he is saying, I have authority to answer this question. I have authority to make this statement, I guess I should say. And um, then he goes on and tells this, um, well, and the statement, of course, being life is not measured by how much you own tells this great story about the man and his crops and tearing down his barns and building bigger barns and then being like, oh, take it easy now. I'm going to eat, drink, and be merry. So as I was reflecting on this, I was thinking about my own life. Um, and recently, in the past month or two, um, we had a, something kind of interesting happen to us. We, Michael and I, well, <laughs> it's actually just me. We never even talked about it. I had a private goal, an unrealistic goal, to have saved a certain amount of money by the time that I was 50 um, and for our family and didn't think that was going to happen and that was fine it was just kind of like hmm, that'd be cool well it did happen because I turned 51 in May and just recently we hit the goal because the um, stock market has been doing so well so, you know, I mean, it'll probably crash again and lose it all like it always happens. And that's fine. That's whatever. Um, however, you know, I thought about that and I thought about um, the statement. He says, now, uh, my friend to himself, you have enough stored away for years to come. Now, take it easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. And <laughs> doesn't that sound like the way we think about retirement sometimes? Like... Um, you know, storing enough away for years to come so we can take it easy and eat and drink and be merry. Um, and then, you know, when God says, yes, a person, well, Jesus says, yes, a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but not to have a rich relationship with God. Oh, I just love that. 
that so captivated me this morning in my first half of the prayer recollection when I just, I just, and you know, I've been um, going through these verses previously about um, hypocrisy and the heart that Jesus wants, and I, and I know I just felt so refreshed reading that and this longing cultivate that more and more and more and for my life to be about that and really the challenge to my own heart what if we lost all of our retirement money what if we lost everything if I had a rich relationship with God we'd be okay there have been so many Christians that have deeply loved God and had nothing of worldly value and had the amazing life and so um, you know but it's hard to say when you're holding it how would you really do without it? So I just pray that God will keep my heart so in tune with him and so richly in love with him. And I just praise you for this, Jesus.